Okay, I'm gonna edit this in the front of this video that it's coming up here, this little clip. Uh, I am speaking from the heart. This is all real to me. Uh, this is the way things are for me. Um, we watched a movie the other day. I think it's based off a book called A Wrinkle in Time. And there was a phrase in there that really sums some things up for me. It goes something like this. All that is seen is unreal. All that is real is unseen. I know you're not supposed to talk bad about people and I really try to avoid it. I just don't know how to talk about this without going into some of it. And I just don't know how. Maybe, like I said before, I'm dense. I'm just dense. I just don't know any other way to do it. All right. It's late at night, so I'm actually having some um, more calming tea here. Oh, this is a mug my niece gave me. Very nice. Um, but I thought I'd address something uh, that last video. There was a commenter on there, and I do appreciate the comments, even the negative ones. Uh, so, interesting comment. And so I, I put a long reply to it, so I thought I'd explain some more stuff here. Um, uh, me and my dad hadn't got along for a lot. Um, and honestly, most people probably wouldn't have either. Um, some things that have been said and done, uh, anybody who's savvy on the internet or modern day even knows how to use electronics would not agree with him. And it got bad enough to where I actually did work for him directly at one point and some things were happening on his end with Employees. I said I don't post this kind of thing here, but um, it caused me to quit and refuse to work with him directly ever again. And I didn't speak with him for two years. Um, and when I say people had to be paid off in a parking lot for stuff like that, um, yeah. Now, when the FBI went after my dad, uh, that was, he was innocent of all that. He really was. Um, so he really was innocent on that. And the FBI was completely wrong, and they are evil and crooked. They are. But let me just put out here. Um, so there's been some dark. Um, if people want to talk about higher levels of consciousness and light beings and all this kind of thing, my dad is definitely on the dark side, definitely three-dimensional, definitely into this reality, into money. Money is everything, kind of. Money is God kind of thing. So, I get that. I do get that. Um, but we do have our differences on that as well. And we have differences on how to treat people. Quite a huge bit of differences. Um, um, I'm sorry. I am telling some on my dad. And it's just, it's not good, but even when um, we went out to eat with some of his brothers and sisters a couple months ago, you know, and he wants to check, it's just not wait for the waitress as a waiter. He yells across the restaurant, woman, like that, woman, give me the check. Oh, no, wait, woman, give me the damn check. Across the restaurant and everybody shuts up and turns and looks and it's just like, how do you even treat people that way? But... So when I say he's been on the dark side, so um, yeah. And with me, I mentioned at one of my videos that I am a dark arts practitioner and this is part of it. I will walk with you in the dark. I will. And I'll try to be there and I want to show love and I want to help. Some people may not listen uh, for all, all my life may not listen, but maybe at some point something will get through. Um, so I do want to help. I try and I do things wrong sometimes. Uh, maybe giving them money back and wanting hugs was the wrong thing to do. I am trying to make a point that you don't have to buy love and get that through to him. And that is difficult, very difficult to get through. Um, I've done this all my life when I say walking in the dark. So I'll title this thing walking in the dark. Um, being a dark arts practitioner, this is what I do. Uh, 
I even did this way back in young teen years. I'll give you another example. Way back in that holidays, uh, there was a guy um, that didn't have any friends, lived on the wrong side of the tracks kind of thing. No friends, but I saw potential in him. It's like I could see that he could be more than what his parents were. You know, that he really wanted more for himself, but he couldn't get out of it. He just needed a friend. So I decided to be friends with him, and he really appreciated it. Um, and I think it helped him a whole lot. I don't know if it helped him enough, but it helped him a lot. Um, to the point, uh, at one point, he even saying to me, thank you for being my friend. Um, not a gay way or anything like that, nothing like that, but he was just so thankful to have a friend. Um, this did not go over well for my parents because he was on the wrong side of the tracks and they forbade me from ever seeing him or speaking to him again because they didn't like his parents. Okay? But that's not what I was trying to do. They thought maybe I'd go over to way off, far off on the dark side kind of thing. And believe it or not, I knew exactly what I was doing even back then. I did this. I've always done this my whole life trying to help people and I will walk in the dark with you and try to help. That's what I do, dark arts practitioner. There's a, um, most people that I see on these chats and some of these little reddits and things for the higher consciousness and light workers and all this, when they get into these situations, they will drop it, drop the people and walk away and be themselves. They want to get rid of their lower vibrational aspects of friends or family or whatever so they can be their higher evolved selves. It's like, I'm not that way. I'm just not. I don't drop people. I don't get rid of people. Um, I will walk with you in the dark. I will be there. So I see things a little differently. And if that offends people, I am sorry. And that is just the way I am. So, and I don't do things right all the time. I absolutely do not. Um, I do things differently than most people. Like that last one, talk about money. Money is everything to my father and it is nothing to me. Yet, me and my father are alike on so many things. We are. Um, we are so much alike on so many things. And it's a lot of things I have to fight internally um, that way. Um, thank God it's not the way we see people. He sees people as things to be used. I see people as me. It's just me. So for, for my dad, um, what happened when he was young, this, this may have contributed some to, to why, why he's like that. Uh, I hope I get the, some of the details right, the way um, mom explained it to me when she found out. But he was, when he was a very, very young kid, he has asthma. He had asthma really, really bad. And the doctors didn't identify it, not locally in South Louisiana. They were clueless. Um, so he needed really special treatment or he was going to die kind of thing. And this is very small, little, small child, small, small tot. Um, and so he needed to go to Houston from Louisiana for treatment. They did not have the money. They were not rich, not, did not have the means at all to go to Houston and stay. So a relative gave them a, um, gave the mother enough money to go down there and stay down there with him until he could, they could treat him and get better um, and try to figure out what the deal was. Uh, they didn't know it was asthma at the time or what was happening, um, really had no clue. Um, so the mother and my dad, my grandmother and my dad, went to Houston when it was a very small tot. The problem was, is when she got there, she just dropped him off and left. Uh, she left, she did not stay there, He was. she went and bought furniture and curtains and things like that and when went back home, she left him there alone as a very small tot uh, that had to have some kind of effect on him. Uh, so I'm guessing that was part of the problem. Uh, and this was left alone for months. He was down there for months, not just a few days, but months with no family, no one there, just him alone. And so 
can only imagine that had some kind of effect. Um, so, you know, he does need love.